This is Matthew Bay. What do we got, Matthew? Well, we're going to run you through how to make your own clay tablet template in order to print up a large number of clay tablets of your own personal fiction or zine or literary device. This is very important if you want to prevent the, uh, the, the polyester resin from, from sticking to your mold. This also can be uh, got at the same place, uh, the same art store or hobby shop that you get the other stuff. We also have plastic gloves, very important for uh, when we're dealing with the, uh, the plastic resin so you get as little of it on your hands as possible. That stuff is nasty. And right and over here we have, this. we have a charcoal uh, respirator mask. With, uh, which is good for volatile, chem volica volatile organic chemicals, such as uh, the fumes released by the, uh, the casting resin or for painting or uh, other nasty things like that. And Matt says, you can't use just a normal filter mask. It's gotta be something serious, because this stuff is toxic. It has to be serious, and they say that the charcoal only lasts for six hours once it's been exposed, so be careful yeah. uh, about changing it out when you need to. Right here, we, I've already started uh, the short story by Kevin Brown, Hunting Bigfoot. I've used a cuneiform-esque method of inscribing the English language. Each letter is, is a made up a number of wedges from the stylus. It says, I hunt for the first of the last of its kind. So, there you go. It's a little difficult because we've got a multicolored palette here. Yeah. The, and what's the reason for the palette? Uh, the multicolored palette? Yeah. I just used uh, several <laughs> different sticks of colored modeling clay for that. There you go. Uh, so in, in order to to impress your your letters on there you simply push the edge of the stylus in and each little push mix makes a new letter. Like so. Uh, yeah. And if you make a mistake, you can simply squeeze it out and start over. Love it. Um, over here, uh, we have... Uh, this is going to be an imprint uh, that I will use as a, uh, an addition to the uh, Kevin Brown story. Um, it is a cartoon slash dig on Michael Trim, uh, who is our space grid nemesis. So it says Michael Trim right here on the outside. It's guy pooping. And let me prepare this. I have to put some mold release spray on it. And it's going to have to dry for a few minutes. Alright. Alright, so Matt is calculating exactly how much uh, plastic toxic material needs to go into this thing. So the uh, two inches wide about. So a radius of one. And so we use some basic geometry which is so uh, what? Pi r squared. And so that would be essentially pi times the thickness of one quarter. Gives you 0.8 cubic inches because he just had the calculator up. And then uh, Google automatically translates it into fluid ounces. 0.44 fluid ounces. So we'll just round that up to half a fluid ounce. So where's the table of uh, how many drops to put in per per ounce? Is it on the back of that? Uh... It's on the back of the, uh, the casting resin. Okay. So just follow the instructions. Right here the 
phonetic Ugaritic cuneiform word for space squid, issue nine. And then a little picture of a squid. And then a little picture of a squid. So that's exactly what look at the kind of medallion we're we're working on right now, yeah. with the Michael Trim one. And uh, after like the main text has been imprinted on the drawing clay, then this will be squeeze up into the corner to verify to the whole world that this is indeed a space squid <laughs> publication. Why don't we show them the uh, the main template? Here's the main template. Uh, this is the f going to be the front page. Yeah, you can see that there's that those little wedges that we've been putting into the modeling clay have, have turned out to be uh, ridges on the modeling clay. Mm -hmm. And this is where the space squid seal goes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So why don't I take out some drawing clay and show you how this will be impressed in after I pressed it down. And I'll put a uh, little bit of plastic here to keep the bottom side from drying out. This paper, by the way, is the most expensive part of the process. It's special uh, clay tablet making paper that you can you need to mail away for. Mm, you can yeah. only get it through the internet. I, I happen to find that paper on the curb. I like how you're using the bottom of the pan to uh, to to mash into the mold. So, you, did you intentionally get a pan and a mold that were the same size? Um, I. Is it just this was a matching set at uh, Goodwill. Excellent. Compression of our clay tablet to essentially print out one of a number of identical clay tablets. We're going to take the plastic uh, casting right here and we're going to place it squarely on top of the clay tablet and then press down. And as it happens, the the clay is, or the, the casting resin, is, is pretty durable, so I don't have to be particularly gentle with it. And you can see how it's already kind of showing through the clear part here. Oh, look at that. And then, space grid motif goes right here. Our very own space squid clay tablet. And I just put this out in the sun and it dries. This is what, what you get a air dried clay tablet. And it's got, uh, it's got a little bit of, uh, of aging marks here, just like a real Sumerian clay tablet would. That's from when I tried to heat it up. Thanks, Matt.